Hey guys, Charles Wall here. Uh, let's talk about the government spending and taxing multiplier and using the MPC and MPS. I understand that your MPC is your marginal propensity to consume. Your MPS is your marginal propensity to save. These together always equal one. Almost all of the AP exam questions are going to start off by giving you your MPC, right? So if they give you an MPC of 0.8, your MPS has to be 0 0.2, right? 0 0.8 and 0 0.2 equal 1. If your MPC is 0 0.75, your MPS has to be 0 0.25, right? If your MPC is 0 0.5, your MPS has to be 0 0.5 also. 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 equal 1. If your MPC is 0 0.9, your MPS is 0 0.1. The reason why I gave you these four, because these are the biggest ones that are asked by the AP exam. If you know those four, understand how to do it, right? It's pretty simple. But these four are the biggest ones that are asked. Now we have to figure out what our multiplier is. Now, remember that the whole point of this is probably because we have what is some kind of a recession, recessionary gap, right? That recessionary gap, there we go, we've got our recession is that the government would like to move output or GDP to full employment. We would like to push aggregate demand all the way to the right back to full employment. But we can't. We're in this recession right now, right? So what they're going to do is they're going to give you some information. They're going to say the MPC is 0.8, right? What does the government need to spend, right? Let's just say our, our recessionary gap here is 500 billion. We need 500 billion of GDP increase to get aggregate demand to ship back to full employment. What does the government need to spend to get our 500 billion GDP increase, right? So we have to find our multiplier. They're going to give you the MPC. Let's say they give us 0.8. I know my MPS is 0.2. You have to know the formula for the multiplier. There's two of them. One is 1 over 1 minus MPC and 1 over MPS. Guess which one I use because I'm simple like a child. I'm going to use the 1 over the MPS. So if my MPS is 0.2, it's just 1 over 0.2. 0.2 or 20 cents goes into $1 how many times? Five times. Easy enough, right? So my multiplier here is five. If my multiplier is five, what must the government spend times my multiplier to give me the 500 billion of increase in GDP to push aggregate demand back to full employment? That's easy. The government spends 100 billion times the five multiplier gives me 500 billion GDP increase to push aggregate demand. So that's the whole point is that the government doesn't need to spend 500 billion because it has an idea what the multiplier is. Therefore, the government will spend 100 billion times or divided times the multiplier, which will give us the 500 billion GDP. Now, obviously, we need to know what our multipliers are. 75, 25, one over the MPS, my multiplier would be four. 1 over the MPS, my multiplier would be 2. My multiplier would be 10. Know these. Know how to figure these out. Know how to find the multiplier, right? Obviously, the easiest thing about the taxing multiplier, which is different than the spending multiplier, a quick sort of understanding, and I have less than a minute to talk to you about it, is that the taxing multiplier is always one less than the spending multiplier. So my taxing multiplier is going to be four. I still need to get 500. If instead of government spending, I had decreased taxes, I would need to decrease taxes by 125 times the four to get a 500 billion increase in GDP. So we could see that taxing multiplier I would have had to lower taxes by 1.25 billion, multiply that by the four to get the 500 billion GDP. That was very quick and dirty, but thanks guys. Be safe. Talk to you soon. This is Charles Wall. Bye.